let's uh let's go a little bit into personalization and how that connects to FBR because we talked about FBR as this like template, right? You've got your squat, bend, push, pull, lunge, and core. You're going to do some variation of upper and lower patterns for that novice client walking into the gym or that more advanced client um, mm-hmm. where, wherever they are, that, that James who's, uh, who's coming to you. So how do we go from we have this you know, pattern-based approach that's laid out three days a week to actually making that personalized to the client that is saying, I want this program who you're doing an assessment with how, how do we go from template to personalized? Oof, gosh, that's a deep one. Um, yeah, I would look at I would look at why why are you giving them that program? Why are they exercising? That would be the first question. Um, because just to you know give two polar opposite examples, if someone's exercising to have a better back squat versus someone's exercising to look good and feel good, uh, exercise selection is going to be vastly different, right? Like we're focusing on the back squat here. Like that's our, that's our bread and butter for this person. We may never back squat. We, we will do the squat pattern, but maybe we never need a back squat with this person. Um, so you think about what their, what their goals are and the intention of that program design. And then of course you have to look at what they're capable of. Um, so we have some people that aren't even capable of performing a pattern of movement. Um, I think the most common one is actually the squat. Um, so there's, there's like variability that needs to happen in the squat to meet them where they are in that movement and give them things uh, that can progress them to eventually being able to perform that movement effectively or that pattern effectively unloaded. Um, so yeah, I mean, those would be the, the two biggest pieces. It's like, why are you giving them that program? Um, so what are their goals and what are they capable of doing? And then what is fitness going to look like for them, you know, a year, two years, 10 years from now? And with that client, we have the ability to play with things like ordering, for example. So when they walk into the gym or on a Monday right after they've had a restful Sunday with their family, what's the priority? Like they failed their squat pattern. We probably want to sit that right up the front when they're fresh and excited and well rested and have that be the first thing that they attack in their session. Whereas if you have a client who is working on their lunge or their push pattern, maybe you end up putting that at the beginning of the session on that priority day for the client. So you get to begin to have fun and play with that. And again, that's so connected to the goal of improving efficiency in the movement pattern and not the goal or intention of burning fat or gaining muscle. Mm -hmm. And so when you're sitting down to write a GBC program, you're not necessarily thinking about those things you're thinking about how do i get that like you know metabolic dose so that they burn fat Mm -hmm. not how am i ordering the workout to make sure that i'm prioritizing the patterns that my client needs to improve on yeah yeah that's a good point and and uh another piece that i think is really important is you know what do our clients want to do in the gym like what do they find uh engaging and and fun quite frankly right so um, I would never go against like the capabilities and the goals and all that stuff, like intentions and capabilities, but you have to consider what's engaging for them in terms of uh, what you're putting in the program. So that's something that I've always thought about. And that's something that I've gone back and forth on. And like, you know, is it like steadfast? I always know best. Or is it like meet the person where they are? Do I go away? Do I give them things that they're not capable of to like, uh, make them happy for an amount of time, right? Like that's something that I used to kind of uh, bounce back and forth with. And what I landed on is just like, you know, always look at what the intention of the design is, always look at what their capabilities are, and also think about what they enjoy um, and, you know, what what they're really engaged with in terms of what they're doing in their program. And you have to remind them on the capabilities and the goal thing very often as well. Um, If you have a client that's like, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Um, you just have to continue to like check yourself and check them in, in terms of uh, those two big pieces. 